Bibles uh, to Luke chapter 9, uh, verse 23. And what we're going to talk about today uh, from our New Testament text is we're going to answer the question, what does being a true follower of Jesus really look like? What does being a true follower of Jesus really look like? Again, our text is Luke chapter 9, verse 23. What's the cost? The question I want you to keep in your mind is, what's the cost? What does it cost us to be a follower of Jesus Christ? What do we have to take up? What do we have to give up to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Anybody ever thought about that? What does it cost? What am I really supposed to do to be a true follower of Jesus Christ? How do I know that I really follow Jesus the way he wants to? And that's the question that we're going to ask today. So I'm going to go into the text in uh, Luke 9:23. It basically says this in the voice version of the text. It says, if any of you want to walk my path, you're going to have to deny yourself. You have to take up your cross every single day and follow me. If any of you, again, want to be my followers, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily. I love that. That's a distinction. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Jesus is telling the people in this text that it's not good enough to just be a casual Christian. Mm. You've got to be all in for Jesus. If you're going to be a true follower of Jesus, you can't be casual about it. You've got to be all in. So what is Jesus telling them? The first step to be a true follower of, 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 of Jesus, to be a true follower, the first step is to give up your own way. That's our first point. He's mm. saying, give up your own way. See, we all have our own dreams, our own aspirations, and our own way of doing things and our own timing when we think things should happen in our life. You know, that's just human nature. We want it the way we want it. But Jesus said, he said, exchange those ways for my vision. Exchange those ways for my timing. Think about it in my way, how I want you to do it. And see, that's the, the awesome thing about God. He wants you to give up, give up your way and do things God's way. So take up your cross uh, daily. Can somebody just say the word daily? Daily. 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 There you go. There you go. Sister Claiborne, daily, daily. Check yourself daily. daily and make sure that what you're doing is, 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 is in line with Jesus. Um, serve and love God on his terms and not just on your own is what the Bible is teaching us. See, many times we want to worship God again on our terms. We want to do it the way we want to do it. When, when God has given us the best way to do things, we still sometimes want to do it our own way. But if we do this, what the Bible says is, it says we do it his way. We are truly his followers. Uh, and we're not just what we call casual followers. So Jesus wants us again to be all in and not just one foot in the door and one foot out. But let me go by the text. The text talks about, again, it says it talks about denying yourself. I want you to think about what does denying yourself look like? What does it really mean in this text to deny yourself? Maybe it looks like maybe reorganizing your priorities in life. Maybe it looks like giving up something that you like to do in order to make more space to talk to God and to pray to him throughout your day. Maybe it looks like treating others in a different way than you usually treat them. Maybe it's about uh, treating people the way that you want to be treated. Uh, denying yourself may simply look like overcoming the urges that we all have to do what we uh, know is, is, is wrong, but we don't do it all the time. Maybe denying yourself is saying, I'm not going to give in to those urges, and I'm just going to make sure that I'm doing things God's way. That's what denying yourself is really all about. So basically, this text this Luke 9, 23 text is about making space for what really matters in life. And so Jesus is saying what truly matters in life is having good spiritual habits, good spiritual habits. Never forget that. That's what taking up your cross daily is all about. It's about having good spiritual habits. Again, remember this statement, good spiritual habits. That's what will save our lives. That's what will save your life even today. That's what will prepare us for what we're going through even on today. That's what will prepare us for what we're going through on tomorrow. That will prepare you to get through the moments, the rough times that, that you have to deal with. That will help you deal with grief and, and loss and all kinds of troubles and mountains and valleys that we encounter. That's what we have to do is have good spiritual habits. So as 
followers of Christians, excuse me, as Christians, as followers of Christ, what are some good spiritual habits? Think about this. Um, maybe scheduling your prayer time. That's a good spiritual habit. Uh, making time again for church and worship. Uh, being kind to others. Uh, examining our attitudes. Uh, looking at things the way that we believe Jesus will look at. That's why we go into the word of God to find out what would Jesus do in this uh, situ situation and in this circumstance. So we have to constantly add things to our daily, our weekly, and our monthly routines and rhythms that will keep us in the will of God. And that's what those, again, good spiritual habits are all about. And so, and see good things, and see the good thing about developing these good spiritual habits is they will become a natural part of your life. And you will find out that your life will begin to look different. Things will work out better for you. Suddenly you will notice improvement in many areas of your life. But the most important thing that you'll notice is you'll have a deeper and more intimate relationship with God. And so that's what this text is all about. It's about learning to have a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. So can I ask you the question, will you work on this week developing some better spiritual habits? Can you do that? If you can do that, I want you to say amen. 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 And amen. Listen, I want to pray together. That was just a quick Bible study I wanted to have with you. And again, I want you to continue to fellowship here on this Zoom uh, for a few more moments. But let's just pray together. Can you bow your heads right now as we talk to God? And so we just want to say this, Heavenly Father, Father, all of our lives belong to you. And we know that we are not alone when we are with you. We want to live a life, God, that honors you. And we want you to be at the center of our lives. And although we know that we're going through some difficult times and difficult moments, we know that what we can do is we can deny our own ways and always seek the path that you have given to us. We're thankful for your daily forgiveness, for your grace, for your mercy, which allows us to get back on the road of recovery. Give us the discernment to stop pursuing those things that don't matter and to start pursuing you every single day. Bless, heal, and deliver all of those that are listening to my voice right now. Help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Help them to know that you love them and that you are here for them every single day. Thank you, God, that we can be great Christians and great followers of you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Listen, it is so good to see you again. We're going to be scheduling these uh, Zoom conference calls for a while as we'll just talk and just share for a moment a word from the Lord. I don't like to be long because we're